Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the effect of the ionosphere. There's a delay of the signal as it travels through the ionosphere, and since the signal is actually part of a carrier wave, and the frequency of the signal is different than the frequency of the carrier wave, as the wave travels through the ionosphere, those two portions of the signal will have a a different index of refraction and therefore a different velocity as they move through the ionosphere. Now, as a reminder, the atmosphere of the Earth has essentially four layers. The lower layer is the troposphere, then we have the stratosphere, then we have the mesosphere, and here we have the ionosphere. The ionosphere is quite a long distance to travel through, and if the index of refraction is such that the signal, which has a lower frequency, therefore has less of an index of refraction than the carrier wave which has a higher frequency and therefore the carrier wave moves slower through the ionosphere than the signal and therefore you have a separation in the timing as the signal and the carrier wave reach the receiver and that needs to be accounted for. So we have what we call the UERE which is called the user equivalent range error which is primarily the square root of the URE squared plus the UEE squared. And the URE stands for user range error, which is associated with traveling to the ionosphere, and UE is equal to the user equipment error, which is the equipment error as the signal, the carrier signal, and the signal itself come into the, into the receiver and how that is being handled, both at the sending at the satellite and at the receiver end of the, uh, of the reception of the signal. So we're in this video mostly concerned with the URE, which is primarily the square root of the clock error squared plus the ionospheric error squared. And the ionospheric error is usually the bigger portion of the two. So you can see that for CA code, Y code in single channel, uh, Y code in dual channel, M code in single channel, M code in dual channel, we will have different values for the various components. Now the clock errors are fairly similar for all five possibilities of signal. So for CA, Y code, signal, Y code, dual channel, M code, signal, and M code, dual channel, notice there's not a lot of difference. Slightly better for the M code. But when we look at the difference between si uh, uh, single channel and dual channel, notice that the error can be eliminated, the ionospheric error can be eliminated when we're in dual channel mode. So obviously when you want the extra accuracy, you want to be in dual channel rather than single channel. Notice the atmospheric delay, and this is all in meters, can be as much as 6 meters in CA code, 5.5 meters in Y code, and 5.5 meters in M code. But that's single channel. For dual channel, that error goes to zero. And then, of course, as we saw, the URE is equal to the square root of the clock error squared plus the ionospheric error squared. If we square these two numbers, add them together, and take the square root, then we get 6.08 for CA, 5.58 for Y code in single channel mode, 0.97 for Y code in dual channel, 5.58 for M code in single channel, and 0.93 for M code in dual channel. So obviously, dual channel, especially in M code, you have the most accurate estimate of the distance based upon knowing how the atmosphere is affecting the signal that we get. So you can see why with dual channel, you definitely have a way to get rid of the fact that both the signal and the carrier wave will travel at different speeds through the ionosphere. Now this is based on a model. It turns out that the ionosphere is a very complicated thing, that the, the index of refraction changes between daytime and nighttime. It changes throughout the night and it changes on the different atmospheric conditions. So obviously we need to account for that and we have a model that will then calculate uh, what we think the delay will be based upon the conditions that we're facing. And so that's why we need to take into account the atmospheric delay because it could produce quite a bit of error in meters, five, six meters in error, and so that has to be accounted for uh, in order to get a better, uh, better GPS signal. So that is what we mean by the ionospheric delay and how it plays a part in the accuracy of your GPS signal. 